You're listening to the Remasculate Podcast with your host, Steve Mudflap McGrew. Aloha, mud babies, pod people, and inhabitants of the planet Earth. It is I, your tiki leader, Steve Mudflap McGrew, back for a glorious podcast. This is coming live. I mean, you're not hearing it live right this second, but it is be- being recorded live in the stateroom, in the suite. You should see the beautiful room of this man. Uh, got a guest that you are going to love. He is in charge of all comedy aboard the ship here, uh, the Harmony of the Sea. And what a, what an act. You were going to love this guy. I have, I have just been amazed at the way he presents himself on stage. His material is amazing, and I am proud to have him on the podcast today. Please welcome Simone Simeon. <laughs> Thank you for that, getting my name wrong. I got it wrong after that build-up. <laughs> Thank you. It's wonderful it's, to be here. It's, it's, it, it's Simeon. I, I always call him Simone because he hates that. Well, I don't know. Simeon's a weird name anyway. What, what, is, the, what is the origin of, of that? Because I always think it sounds like something from Planet of the Apes. Well, it is. It's a, my parents <laughs> named me after a thing that plays with its feces. <laughs> so it's not far off from where I'm at right now, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's because, you know, my family's Greek, so it's um, my grandfather's name. Uh-huh. So I don't know. I just, you know. Um, now, <laughs> you got me with that one. Um, we No one ever uses your last name, ever. I, on, in the paperwork, I see on the printed on the, on the ship, yes. you never say your last name. Do you want anybody to know, or you just want to go by uh, Simeon? I think they have a hard enough time with Simeon, uh-huh. but the last name would be uh-huh. too much. Hercules? Where do you start with that? That sounds like a, a speech impediment, Hercules. Yeah, it is. Hi, Simeon Hercules! <laughs> So I think they just leave it there. Oh, you know, we'll just leave it at Simeon. Okay. Now, how long have you worked for uh, uh, Royal Caribbean? Uh, it's 10 years now. Oh. This year is the 10-year anniversary of my employment. Bazinga. Right? I know. <laughs> I know. It's been a fun 10 years. You know, I've worn a lot of different hats over the years, you know. What did you start off doing with them? I started off as a crew staff, um, which are... The people who like host the various activities around the ship. So uh-huh. you have like your, you know, your theme nights and your game shows. And um, I did that for about a year. Uh-huh. And then I became a piano player and singer for them, which is a weird transition. But I said, you know what? I think I could do this piano player gig. And do you, is there, do you, like you would just sit dip there, like in what's the name of that bar, the, the schooner, schooner bar. bar or whatever, yeah, and, and roll out the barrel. We'll have a barrel of fun, that kind of stuff. Well, no, but good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> roll out the barrel. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no, a lot of Neil Diamond. Oh yeah, really? A lot, a lot of Sweet Caroline, a lot of Hotel California. Song, song, everybody knows what. There we go. I didn't do it like an opera singer, but so. <laughs> song, song, blah. Yeah, I would have had one person, one deaf person in there with their miracle ears. Hey, me, money, no one. <laughs> me, and you, I thought me too. The blue blind man. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Oh my God! We both just got fired. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I can't believe you're making fun of you know people with less um, so, yeah. sense of the six senses that you have. I am so offended. I will be writing a letter to everyone. <laughs> uh. Well, let me say that's one of the things that I find so refreshing about you. It's one of the things that I find myself why I'm drawn to your friendship. Are you you're it, just as uh, twisted as i am you you don't have that pc filter that well, I, and i i love that you can't i think as a comedian you can't you really can't and so many people do nowadays and it's well i think the thing that drives me crazy is when we say something like that we're just having fun and people think that comedians are being vindictive and we have a mean agenda and we're and it's no i find the people that are offended uh-huh. are, are meaner 
Right. I think that because they, they're trying to hide their meanness. <gasps> right. Like, I would never say that. <laughs> I want to, but yes. I would never say that. Exactly. I almost feel like they're doing it just to cover themselves. And don't you see this in the comedy room that people that uh, do the, oh, have that knee-jerk reaction for someone else? It's not even for them. That's like, oh, why would you make that joke about Asians? Because they're laughing. Look, right. they're laughing. Yeah, I found over the years that nine times out of ten, I almost want to say ten times out of ten, but nine times out of ten, the people that are offended are not the people that you're talking about. Yeah. Always. Yeah, and Every I think time. you stumble onto something by saying that they are probably more like that. They're probably actually racist. Right, yeah, absolutely. And, and trying to hide it, just block it so hard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? But I, you know what I think is funny is how many uh, people come up to you after the shows and say how much they loved you and, and stuff like that. And it is the people, the the minorities that will come up and say, man, I loved you. Because I've had people go, I can't believe you opened with that black guy's hit on you joke. Oh, that's a great joke, by the you, way. You, thank yeah. you. Thank you. And people are almost offended by that where the black guys are like, that's the funniest shit I ever heard in my life. Yeah. Well, it's just, you know, the, the world is just such a weird climate right now with everything. You know, everybody's getting offended. Everybody's being touched. It's like, so it's just weird, especially for us, because that's what we do. We point out what's, you know, what's What the on. absurdity is. What the absurdity yeah. is. Yeah. Now, know? have you always been been funny, or did you kind of uh, just work your way into it by playing the piano, or... Yeah, you know, I never had a, a you know an inkling to do stand up. I was I, I my I my roots were as a classical musician. I studied um cello and bass. Oh my god, no wonder you get laid like a rock star. <laughs> You're telling me <laughs> that bottle of lotion over there ain't just for decoration. How many times did you go to a party and there oh. was a cello over in the corner? <laughs> and, and I and, said, you know what? <laughs> if I can start playing this thing, the bitches will start singing along. Oh my you know, they love Bach Vivaldi. <laughs> They really do. They really do. You know, I'll show you an air on the G string. Yeah, I always felt that way about guys in bands that wanted to play the uh, the the trombone or one of those instruments that like you're only good for these few songs. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're only good for. It's not like you're never going to be part of a, a a rock band with the with the uh, xylophone. No, you'll never know. Well, look at Chuck Mangione. What's that guy? You know, one song. <laughs> I can't remember. That's all I know. Well, that was remember, that wasn't even it. But you remember there was a, a few notes of his. What was his? Yeah, that's that's yeah. it. See, Feels, that was it. That, that was, was it. That's it. Feels so good. And don't judge me by that singing. I just woke up. So relax, people out there. Yeah, it's just three o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> and he just woke up. He texted me, "I'm awake now. If you'd like to record the podcast." <laughs> I must wake up the fatigue. I must cure the fatigue at 3 p.m. They seek him here. They seek him there. Now, this is uh, uh, how uh, Simeon and I met was we didn't even know each other at, at all. And somebody asked me to do a show for you. Yes. And, and I'll let you tell that story because I don't want it to seem like... Oh, all right. To say what happened to you, and I'll say why we did the show. Right. Well, interestingly enough, this has been a really fun year. So back in April, um, I got a phone call from my sister, and she called me in my cabin on the ship. And it's never a good thing when somebody calls you from land. Never. Never. On a boat in the middle of nowhere, they can get a hold of your cabin. You know, either you won the Powerball... Or a portal has well, opened up. I feel that way when my phone just randomly rings anytime yes. during the day. Anytime during the day. Like, who's, who's calling me on the boat? Yeah, so it's like my heart skips a beat, especially now after that. So my sister calls me April 3rd. It was like um, 9.45 in the morning, and she said, I have something to tell you. And I go, what? And she goes, the house burned down. And she goes, the dog's passed away, and Mom is in the hospital. And, you know, you're just, you're just taken back. You're like, what? Because your whole world changes. You know, everything that you ever had is gone. In a, in a split second. In a split second. And so I, I didn't even react until maybe, 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 maybe um, eight hours later. Did you react bigly? 
Look, I reacted because there was a really big problem in this country. Believe me, I acted bigly, and it's a big problem that we're going to take. Believe me when I tell you, Lou, we're taking care of fires, and it's going to be great. I don't mean to laugh at that, but, but <laughs> yes, okay, you, you, your house burned, and you lost everything. Yeah, cute Trump impression. Yeah. So I, um... Yeah, so I found out, and I immediately went to the cruise director on here. I went to his office, Abe, who's a great cruise director. And I said, I don't even know what just happened. And he goes, what? And I go, well, I just got a call from my sister that our house burned down, and my dog's passed away, and my mom's in the hospital. And I, and he goes, oh, my God. And he goes, are you okay? And I go, well, I, I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> because you're so shocked. Yeah. I was so shocked that you don't even, you know, you can't even react. So like, you you weren't upset and crying at this right. time okay because yeah. I, mean, I mean i don't know what i would do i have no idea what right. my initial would be like <gasps> well you you go into such um panic mode because you start thinking about everything uh-huh. that it's you don't have time to react at the moment because you think okay what did we lose where are my mom and dad gonna go do we, we need to get them a place you know we need clothes everything yeah because you think they lost everything how it was on the news it was a complete loss they, you know, do you know what started it did you ever find out? Well, that? I, we know it wasn't Billy Joel, so that's good. He didn't start the fire. He did. Well, we thought at first perhaps it could have been him, uh-huh. but then we did some research and we found out that he didn't start it. Most likely he didn't start it. So, no, it's it just, um, <laughs> you're so inappropriate, Steve. <laughs> Very inappropriate. Did your mom get hurt? You said she was in the hospital. Did she get hurt from the fire? or uh, She it... had some minor burns, but she got out. Okay. Yeah, so she got out. So you never know. I mean, anything. You know, these houses are built in, you know, 1954. You know, right. who knows what could spark anything. But, you know, it's um, it went up. And so I got off. They every, The funny thing is, everybody asked me here if I wanted to sign off and go home. And I'm like, no, because then there's <laughs> What no am home. I going home to? <laughs> what, where am I going? So I stayed on here. And then... um. You know, they they put him up in a, a hotel, and then while my mom and dad were in a hotel, I got busy here trying to find realtors to get them relocated as quickly as possible. And in the same neighborhood. I really wanted to find a place in the same neighborhood so life would not be as catastrophic for them. At least they could be by the neighbors, right? by their restaurants, their groceries. The things they understood and knew. And, yeah. So we really, yeah. So we found a place in the same neighborhood. And um, then we, you know, the, the whole fundraiser aspect started. And that's really what saved everybody because, you know, everyone came together and raised a lot of money. And that's when they contacted you. Yeah. And that's, uh, they contacted me and said, uh, a comic has lost everything. His house burned down. He's lost his dogs. Would you like to be part of a fundraiser? And I said, yes. Yes. Like, that was it. It was like a comic. I didn't know who you were. Right. I was just told a comic needed help. And I'm like, I'm in. Because one day, you know, what if it happens to you or, or whatever? I just, to me, the comic world is supposed to be like that. Yeah. That's the, we're always supposed to help each other. Even though I don't feel that a lot in the real comic world. You know, there's a lot, a lot of people going, hey, you know who you ought to book? You know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, West Coast perhaps. Yeah, you know a lot, a lot of that. But one of my one of the questions that I wanted to ask you about uh, it was your dogs. Yes, because I am, I'm an animal person. I mean, I love animals. I cried like a baby mm-hmm. when my dog died just recently. Okay. Um, I had an American Eskimo. I've had three of them. They're they're actually tattooed on my on oh, my yeah, arm. Oh yeah, look at that. And um, uh, so. How do you, what was the first thing did, with your dog? Were you, how did you deal with the dog well, thing? I think for all of us, the dogs are the biggest um, part of the whole thing. I would say the dogs are 90% of the pain and the loss because they're your family members. Oh, I totally agree. You know, but the good thing is, you know, that they were not burned in the fire. They weren't? Oh, good. They were not burned. No, they, you know, in most cases, people die in fires from smoke inhalation. Mm-hmm. And so they had passed away from smoke inhalation. Like in uh, their sleep, sort of? Or just, yeah, uh, yeah, because it puts you into like a deep kind yeah. of sleep and then you die from the, the fumes. But they were not, they were not even burned at all. The firefighters went in and brought them out and there was not even a little mark on them. So that's kind of a blessing, you know, but it's still, you know, I still think about it every day. <sighs> You know, so it's just, 
you know. I didn't mean to make you sad. I can tell by the look on your face. Well, that's all right. I have to see your act tonight, so I'm getting ready. Um, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me come off stage again and go. <laughs> that's how you do it. <laughs> No. So, but they were great. Melody and Simba, they were two boxers. You know, and boxers are such fun dogs. Yeah, they yeah. Really are. And you've got you've got uh, dog pictures in your. Yeah, a guest had somebody make those for me. They're two wooden sculptures. They they took their fi- their pictures off my Facebook page, and they had them made by an artist out in their local town. And then they they brought those on. That's very nice. Yeah, that it was is really very sweet, nice. Very touching. Yeah. And when are you going to get them tattooed on you? Well, um, <laughs> please. I don't want a tattoo artist on me. Have to work around all those pimples and hair? No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. I'll spare them that torture. Today, we are uh, celebrating Thanksgiving on a ship. Today is Thanksgiving. It is a Haitian Thanksgiving. It's a very Haitian Thanksgiving coming to NBC this fall. Yes, we are in Haiti on Thanksgiving, so we have a lot to be thankful for just looking out the window. Don't we? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I celebrated my first meal of the day, my Thanksgiving meal at the Park Cafe with a shrimp salad. So Uh-oh. what is more Thanksgiving well, than shrimp in Haiti? I had a whole can of Pringles today. My God. Yes. The God. pilgrims would be at- <laughs> They really would. I think they would have loved Pringles. I think they would have loved Pringles. Do you think the pilgrims would have put the chips in their lip and made the duck face? The duck, probably. Do you think they'd have done that, too? They'd have taught the Indians how to, hey, watch this. Oh, I can do that, too. I like how your Indian sounds like an Asian. That's all my, that's every, that's every, (laughs) that's every voice that I, I can do. When I was on the radio, in Denver morning radio, no matter what, if I started off trying to be Swedish, yeah. it ended Asian. If I started off with a "Hola, amigo," I can't, I can't hold an accent. It always goes Asian, no matter what. Well, because it's the most fun, I think. Is that what it is? Yeah, Asian's a very fun accent. Yeah. Well, you do a great uh, Asian accent. Oh well, yeah. Well, thank you. Your your your, your impressions, impersonations, are are, are very good. Is it because you just spend hours making fun of people? Is that pretty what it much. is, you evil man? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I just look, stare at people on, on ships and say, oh, okay, that's a funny person. I could, you know. Because that's where I, I've lived on ships for 10 years now, so I'm surrounded by just, you know, thousands of people every week, month after month, and you just hear funny voices and things. So. My balcony isn't big enough. <laughs> My, oh yeah! I was saying, if I worked at guest services, I would, I would just love to tell people what I really thought. I do my old angry guy. My balcony isn't big enough, and I would say, "Well, sir, why don't you try the other side of it?" Thank you. Good night. <laughs> you know. <laughs> There's so many things. I, I was laughing because uh, I was sort of under the under the impression you should never really make fun of the ship or the guests too much mm-hmm. because they'd be like, please, we're trying to make a living here, you know. And you come right out and go, hey, <laughs> we were just in Haiti. There's a reason to never get off the ship. <laughs> you know, I mean, like... Well, you know, because I think people see it's, you know, it's a beautiful port. I mean, it's really a beautiful beach. But it's funny, because when do you ever say, oh, you know what? I'm going to Haiti next week. I can't wait. I can't, because people don't say it. It's not a normal thing people say. Because Haiti, it's it's a grief-stricken nation. It's, it's they got a lot of turmoil. I, I assumed that it was flat. No matter, from what I've seen and heard of yeah. the storms that came through, the hurricanes, yes. the, the Clinton Foundation, I just thought it was going to just be this wiped out piece of land with a, maybe a, a few trees that don't have limbs on it anymore. You know, that's the way you think of it until you get here and you go, oh my God, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's like a mini Hawaii. It's very lush. You know, there's mountains. Yeah, the green, the green mountains. And- so I, you know, it's beautiful. But you know, it's just funny that you know, that we go, that we say we're going to the beautiful destination of Haiti. It's just funny. You know, that's why I think that's why they laugh at it. You know, we we're allowed to make fun of things here because I think the guests really like the honesty of it. Yeah. You know, because you go to places, you know, like Disney, for example, where everything is perfect and there's no flaws with anything at all. Right. And, and you know. I think that people like the fact that, you know, you can stab yourself a little. 
Yeah. Because that makes you, I think, more an endearing company. Yeah. So. I, I had made fun of, uh, when I was working for one of the other cruise lines, the the people that go to the buffet and balance like eight plates on their arms. Yeah. You know, like, you know you're allowed to go back, you know. It's not one trip. These yeah. people are balancing more plates than that juggler on Ed Sullivan. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I don't understand. The, the, is that, do you think that's people that have never sailed before, or is that just sheer gluttony? What What do you think? Because you know, do they not know they can take one plate? There's my salad. I can go back. I can get my entree. I can go back and get. Well, I think it's a YOLO. It's a YOLO thing because I would do that. I would I would load up eight plates. Really? I, yeah. I, Just to, I don't want to do this trip again. If I had if I had you know six more hands, I would load up eight plates and bring them all back to the table. One on top of your head. On top of Just, my head. Yeah, I balance everything on top of my head. I balance. So for you, I balance everything. <laughs> oh, I would love to do that, but I you know, but I you know, more power to him. God bless him. Eat it all. That's what life's about. This is the most food I've ever seen ever. Uh, on this ship, Harmony. Yeah. Because as you walk, as you walk down the ship, you can just say to somebody, where do you want to eat? And you just go to your right. How about that place? Yeah. Or you look to your left. How about that place? Or no matter where you are, there there is a, a restaurant or a place to eat or a specialty restaurant. Yeah. or a, a, There's like 24 different restaurants. Is that what's, what's on here, 24? Yeah. Wow. And what's great is that there's so many different varieties of it. I mean, you can have sushi. You can have Italian. You have a deli. You have pizza. You know, you've got a steakhouse, you've got a, a, like a high-end gastronomical weird thing that I don't even know. It's all this... You know, Is that the Wonder... Wonderland? One, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't know... I've been on the ship now four times. I saw it the last time I was here. Just, I happened to walk by and go, what is this place? Oh, yeah, it's a little... I kind of look, it's kind of like a tunnel. It's kind of like a tunnel you walk in. Yeah, it's all Wonderland themed. Have you been been in there? Yes, I just went for the first time, actually, two weeks ago. We went and had dinner there. What type of food is it? Is that one of the places they cook with chemicals or... Yeah, I've seen that on, like, chefs where they make the, the, the... The ice, you know, the ice cooks it, or the flame has done something, um, or the... Well, you don't, we don't see the cooking techniques, uh-huh. but they bring just really intriguing dishes to the table, um, and it's very hard to explain. Um, I, I, I couldn't even... Like, they'll bring out a, a gazpacho in a test tube, but it's clear, but it's tomato soup. But it's clear. But it's clear. But when you drink it, it's like, oh, this is tomato, but you look at it, and it looks like water. And it's just very interesting dishes. Does your brain... Feel feel like it's having that dish because you know part of me eating is the presentation. It yes. had, you know, beautiful you know steak or something. But if I just had a liquid that tasted like an amazing steak, would my brain go? Mm. Yeah, it's in, it's really unusual. But there's many courses, so you kind of get used to it after. You know, I think they it's like eight courses we had, maybe even ten. It's a lot of little sampling. And then the entree is large, and the desserts are large, too. But the, the leading up to it, you have all kinds of different little things. Ah. It's really delicious. Ah, ah. Book your reservations now. I got you 7,000. When you were a kid, what were your, what were your influences of, of entertainer, uh, entertainment or entertainer? Who did you, who'd you think, ooh, I want to be like that? Well, John Holmes comes to mind. Yeah, well, for all of us. All of us. All of us. He was my largest influence, literally. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> right now, there's people going, "Huh? Uh, Google Siri? Who is John? Siri? <laughs> Who is John? Oh my! <laughs> oh. Wow! No wonder he was his largest influence. Oh, baby! <laughs> he and his buddies were playing jump rope with that. Um. Well, you know. I would say my heroes as a kid, I Mozart was my first. I know. This is why I'm the laid count is still at zero on the wall. I really lo- I loved Mozart. Uh-huh. And then I um, grew to love uh, Walt Disney uh-huh. and Jim Henson. Uh-huh. I would say I really liked those cats. And Steven Spielberg I really admired as a kid. And, you know, I just kind of had a weird, oh. you know. I actually have, have become friends with uh, a guy named... Guy Gilchrist. Uh-huh. Do you know who Guy is? Guy that sounds really familiar. He was uh, one of Jim Henson's 
guys that drew the cartoons of the Muppets. He did the Muppet comic books and drawings. and really? Yeah. And, and uh, I happened to buy an old T-shirt out of a resale shop that was an old, old Muppets. And, and I had it on and it was like, oh, I think I drew that because I've been on the that's but cool. yeah, but he it, it was a, that's his he does the Muppets and and Nancy and Ninja Turtles. I love and, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, like he draws that. a lot of that stuff. So you should look him up on on Facebook. And, yeah, well, I have nothing to do all day on Thanksgiving. Yeah, well, your room. I don't mean to out you here, but your room is a television set and one of the largest selections of game consoles I've ever <laughs> seen in my life, and you you pretty much live. On that, right? Yeah, I am pretty much Quasimodo in the bell tower here, with my PlayStation and my Nintendo Switch and my virtual reality headset, which really helps for those lonely nights. Now, I bought a virtual virtual reality headset for your iPhone. You uh, know, when you put your phone in there sure. and it has the good little tiny game controller, it doesn't really work or appeal to me. I don't know if that is because of what it is or is. It Have you ever be. played with one of those I've before? I've never had those, so okay. I don't know the difference. But I'll show you the PlayStation, and then you can see the difference after the interview. Where you kind of just do the whole 360 kind of... Yeah, I, I would presume that the PlayStation headset would be a little better than just the attachment for the phone. Yeah. Because that's like a $400 um, headset. So that's what you spend your money on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what I spend it on. I buy headsets to fight dragons. So, you have one of the best Donald Trump impersonations I have ever heard, and and as you know, I even suggested you to a TV producer friend yes. of mine that is sh doing a show, because I think your your impersonation is better than anybody I've ever seen. Beats the crap out of Baldwin on Saturday Night Live. Oh well, thank you. Well, you know, how did how did you did, did you know you could do that, or was it something you stumbled upon? I totally stumbled upon it. In fact, I think I was. I was doing a show here, and I just did a few throwaway lines, um, and I, I don't remember because this was last year, and my boss says, you know, that's a really great impression, and I go, what? No, it isn't. I don't. He goes, no, you totally sound like him, and I go, I don't think so. He goes, trust me, you sound like him. You should start putting him in the act because you do a great job, and I go, well, okay, and so I started to do him, and then sure enough... You know, as the year has gone on, it's become a huge, like, thing on the ship. A lot of people hear about the Trump, and then they come back. and Right. I, that's what I, I've noticed this week, yeah. that there has been more people, like, coming back for for Trump. Yes, they but, love the Trump. They know. love the, the, the Trump. Well, I learned, by watching Baldwin, I learned what not to do. Because Baldwin... He's, yeah, he, he does everything. He keeps the lips pointed. He, he squints up and does the lips. That's all he does. Yeah. And he makes it too cartoony. So I really watched him on TV. And I learned, like, how he, when he does interviews, you know, because, look, he keeps it placed here. And right now, we're talking with a lot of really incredible people. Believe me when I tell you. We're doing great Great things, okay, and we're talking to China and Japan and really wonderful people. And then you, I kind of figured out how he does that little, you know, gets that. Right. And do you feel like from watching it and doing the impersonation and, and paying attention to him, do you think that he is talking to the people that way? Like he is trying to get, you know... Uh, uh, an easier message across? Or do you think that, like some people, I think he's simple and he just talks like an idiot. Well, you know, n no one wants that job. That's the hardest job in the world. Ever. The president of the United States. And I don't, you know, it's, I, I couldn't even imagine what it would be like to be in that. Because no matter what you do, people are going to throw stones and hate yeah. you and, you know, go crazy. So I, I don't know. Part of me thinks it's... <laughs> You know, when you're in that job, I think you're just reaching. You're trying to reach as many people as possible. Yeah. And, you know, you've probably got some people, you know, because you know there's people above you even when you're president saying, you need to say this. You need to go out there and say this. You need to go and say this. And, you know, he's probably got that from every angle. You know, when he gets out in front of a podium, he's just trying to keep everything. <laughs> Look, I love the blacks, the Jews. Everyone's great. You're all terrific people. Believe me. <laughs> they don't mean to offend anybody. They don't mean to offend anybody. I love you. You're really great. Asians, you're really doing great things in a big world. Oh, he said big world. Why? Because they're small? 
You yeah, know, so right, right. It's, you know, right. It's, like he, the him catching crap because he opened a bottle, the water. Like he drank it with two hands. Did you? Oh, yes. about that? It's, like, you know what? I have done stuff like that before too because I don't want to spill on myself. Like you lean away from your, you yeah. know, don't want to get it on you. Like now I'm gonna be ju- look. Look at the way he drinks water. You know, and I wonder if the internet has made people more like that. The internet to me is the CB radio. Of its of its day, I don't remember if you were old enough or you ever played with CB, where you were just you were incognito and the breaker breaker one nine. Look at this idiot in front of us, you know. Yeah, I never had the uh, white trash playset as a kid. It's, I did. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I think it's I I think that's the same uh, thing. The internet has given you this voice. Yes. And the, you know, there's these keyboard warriors that would just have no clue. They're not educated. I don't mean to, you know, I don't mean to slam everybody. Believe me. But I think it's given a voice to the uneducated who have just enough to regurgitate what their idiot friend has told them. You yeah. know what I mean? Everybody's opinion is it matters. Is yeah. What people believe, and that's not not true. Yeah. And and one of the things that that, that bugs me and and. Uh, is I'm a big I'm a big linear thinking person. That that's the way I, I if if this means this, this has to mean that. If you're if you believe this, that's, and I watch so many people have up and downs with their belief. Like, well you just said this person should be kicked out of office. Well this guy just caught groping titties, but you like him, so he's okay. See what I'm saying? Instead of going, Well I guess they all should just be kicked out. Right. And say that bugs me when, when people just pick and choose their beliefs, and you see a whole lot of that on the internet. Right, because they're uneducated, and they don't know really what they stand for. They're just going for the hippest thing. Right. It's gluten-free, my friend. That's what it is. It's a gluten-free trend, and they're jumping on the bandwagon, which is why I don't get involved. I put on my headset, and I slay dragons, and I don't get laid, and life is good. I caught the biggest crap for gluten. I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> I I have said that I think that's one of the biggest scam trends going around right yeah. now because it i'm gluten gluten free gluten you know it's gluten free that sheet on your bed yeah, exactly. is gluten free eat that some bitch because you'll go I, i'm I, i'm gluten uh i'm not gluten tolerant do you know that did you go to a doctor did you get diagnosed no i just decided that i gluten intolerant so that to me you need to be diagnosed for stuff unless you just want to jump on the bandwagon well, I feel better when I stopped eating gluten. I felt better when I stopped hitting myself in the head with a hammer. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? A hammer. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, it's, yeah, it's just people jump on trends. You know, health people are the worst. I'm, you know, obviously I'm not a health person. No, but you have lost a ton of weight, right? And I don't mean, I don't mean to say ton in a bad way, but. Yeah, I would say maybe 60 pounds or so. Yeah, because I heard somebody last night say, ooh, you've lost a lot of weight. Yeah, well, it's real easy on a ship to gain weight. I mean, I mean, look, twenty pounds. Twenty. Pounds? I'm twenty pounds up from ship work this yeah. year. I mean, because there's so much good food and it's available, you know, twenty four seven. And what are we doing? We're playing video games, so, slaying yeah. dragons, <laughs> slaying dragons. I'm gonna go throw back a thing of Pringles. You know, so let's see. I've been working on it. You know, I've been calorie counting. Calorie counting is probably the biggest thing for me because I never counted calories before. Do you count calories now? I try to. I try, I try, I really, well, this week I'm not because I'm in vacation mode, but that's what, that's the largest thing that helped me lose 60 pounds. Did you actually look at the calories on, on something and write it down or how would you calorie just kind of randomly in your, well, this has 400, I probably shouldn't have anything else after this. Um, right. You can, I, I've just been eyeballing it, you know, that like if you eat, you know, a sandwich, you know, you look at the size, but you go, oh, that's maybe three or 400 calories for that half of it. You know, so I just tried not to get past, like, a 1,500 mark per day. Mm -hmm. And I I ate a lot of vegetables. I tried to eat two meals a day that were just vegetables and, you know. Like, I didn't carb cut. Like, I had fruit for breakfast with granola and stuff, but I didn't go past that 1,500 mark. Yeah, well, then again, there's people who say fruit. I I thought fruit was great. When I went on a diet, I was eating a lot of fruit, and they're like, nope. 
So much sugar in the fruit, that's just going to, that's, yeah, that's bad for people you. People have yeah. lived on it for thousands of years and have had no problems. Yeah. And now we're cutting out fruit and we've got gluten problems. Yeah. So relax, people. Yeah. And I was living several years ago when I, I, I got up to 210. That's the biggest I ever got. I weighed 128 pounds when I graduated from high school. Skinny. 210. Wow. I was buying like 38 waist and I'm like, I'm done. So I started, that was my first diet ever. And I, I lost 30 pounds. But, uh, I was eating a lot of lean cuisines. Oh, okay. Just those little, you know, lean cuisine. And my doctor goes, those are horrible for you. I yeah. go, why? They go, a lot of sodium, a lot of preservatives, and there's so much rice in that that the rice is carbs and basically is... Sugar and then fat. Yeah, it's more. So I'm like, oh, I thought I was doing good by eating lean cuisine. Yeah, but you know what? Once again, all that rice is real fattening. How many morbidly obese Asians do you see in scooters? I not see any. I don't see none. I don't see none. Exactly. So, you know, there we go again. It's all in moderation. You know. <laughs> That's how they get sumo wrestlers is they make them eat American food. It just gets out of control with the people. You know about this. I'll never forget the Caesar salad story. And I tell this in the show. I was at the Italian restaurant on here. And a woman ordered a Caesar salad. And she said she didn't want any dressing, cheese, or croutons on the salad. That's just lettuce, isn't it? It's a bowl. It's literally a bowl of lettuce. And I say, the only thing Caesar about the salad is how much the waiter wants to stab you. <laughs> because it's ridiculous. It's like, moderation. But don't. Yeah. Uh, then you're no fun. Then nobody wants to hang out with you. Mm -mm. Who, you know, oh, the lettuce lady's coming over for dinner? No, thanks. Have you ever been embarrassed by somebody like that that you were with? Have you ever been like at a table and... And they're just going, and I would like it on the side. And how is your steak cooked? I mean, can I get it rare or can I get it? Now, the uh, the green beans, are they cooked in butter or are they used in oil? Is there an oil yes. with that? Like, shh. I mean, I've been with people like that, and I will look at the waiter and kind of give them a... Yeah, like you a, give them the look. I give That's them the look like, God, I'm so sorry. I'm this, so, this person is, has a condition. Have you ever been around that kind yes. of... Yes, uh, a few people, a high maintenance, you know. Uh, a Mensa, I know a person in Mensa who's... A very high maintenance eater when he goes out, you know, and it's like, oh, Lord. Well, they say there's a fine line between brilliance and insanity. And I mean, I've, a very fine line between the... And I've seen them. I've worked with them. No, he's this guy is brilliant, but I, every time we go out to dinner, he's just like, oh, Lord. He asked for burnt lasagna once. I want burnt lasagna. And they bring him like a well-done piece, and he goes, no, this isn't burnt. I want it burnt. So they bring it back, and it's basically black. Just black, just charcoal yeah, it's black. Like, this is what I wanted. It's like, oh god, what is? Why would anybody want burnt lasagna? Because Did he, he likes it crispy. He wants a really crispy lasagna. So it just, what taste does it have other than charcoal? Yeah, if you want crispy lasagna, get the uh, you know uh, pizza Pringles. That'd be the same thing. My my girlfriend is like that with with uh, bacon. She likes crispy, like burnt bacon yeah that i understand though and i'm like i like it a little wobbly and floppy hello <laughs> <laughs> you know i just don't want it to be like you know i want to be able to to bite it and pull on it and, and you know when you bite into your bacon and cheese sandwich i want yeah. that combo to happen not for it to just turn to powder in your mouth you know there's a lot of places I could go, but the kids are listening. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I like crispy bacon. I think it's a good contrast, especially on a burger. It's nice to have that next to the old Tillamook cheddar. Uh huh. It's a fun afternoon, my friend. Uh huh. Now, uh, we just found out, well, I just found out that you are a victim. <laughs> yes. Of, of, uh, uh, what do they call it? Identity. Identity theft. theft. You actually, you're the first person I've ever, I mean, I've heard about it. I've seen people say it on Facebook. You're the first person I've ever talked to that went, holy crap, somebody has stolen my identity. And I don't know who would want it. Have fun, my friend. There is some guy right now laying in bed slaying dragons. Eating Pringles. That's actually not a bad life. I would want that identity. Yeah, as if the house fire wasn't enough. So, this is a really interesting story. Um, last week, I'm sitting here, and I get an email that says, um, it was from the Florida uh, Highway Department of Motor Vehicles, uh -huh. and it said, um, 
Did you just log into your account? Um, if you did, please disregard this email. If you didn't, please contact us. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I don't, I don't, I didn't log into anything. So then I thought, well, maybe it has something to do with my mom and dad because we're all on the same thing. And so I sent them a message. I go, did any of you do access anything with our licenses or anything? They go, no, nothing. So I go to the license website and then I log in. And you need all of your information to log in. You uh -huh. need your social security number, you need your driver's license number, address, everything. And so I logged in, and then it sent me that same email again. We see that you just logged in. If you did, you know, please disregard this. And then I thought, oh, crap. You might have just given all your stuff to somebody? No, or? no, I thought somebody already has the information. Got the entire, yeah. All because right. they were, if they were able to log in with... with oh, I see what you're saying. If they did it... And you got it. Two hours and you got the exact same one. Right. That same information. That All was right. my test to okay. see if I logged in, if I would get that same email. Okay, back, I or, see what you're saying. Or if that email was like a phishing scam thing. Yeah. So sure enough, it was the same email. So I sent them a thing going, I did not log in. So I um I uh, looked up identity theft, and they said the first thing you should do is see if there's anything on your credit account, any new accounts. And at that time, there wasn't, but one had already been made, which I did not know about. I pulled back into port Saturday, because my phone, I didn't have my phone turned on. I have Wi-Fi, but I don't get text messages. Mm -hmm. out. And it said, you have three charges on a JCPenney card. For one was for six hundred, one's for five hundred, and one is for twenty four hundred dollars. Did you go ooh, to JC Penny? And I said, No, I was ooh. having a my Thanksgiving in Labadee in Haiti. A very Haitian Thanksgiving. It's a very Haitian Thanksgiving with Pearl Bailey, <laughs> B. Arthur, this fall on CBS, followed by all of the family. So uh, it turns out that the, they had issued a credit card to the people. And it was a physical card. It was not bought on the internet. So I'm thinking, oh, now what's happening? You know, are people stealing mail or what? I don't know. So I had to put a, a, a freeze on the credit, on my credit. So there's four. They say there's three major credit bureaus, but there's four. There's a fourth lesser known. So I contacted each one of them, and you put a freeze. So nobody can get credit in your name. It basically locks you down. Yeah. So that night... Somebody tried opening account for Sprint services, uh -huh. and that got denied. Then two days later, when you were here, somebody tried opening a Best Buy card, and that got denied. Um, and they it was all in person. So obviously they have a fake ID if they're doing this in person, applying for credit cards at a Best Buy and a Sprint. So that, that means they may possibly look like you, right? If they have an ID, because, you know, you have to present... Like, um, if I do a charge card, I got to hear my driver's license, here's my charge card. I don't think so. No? I, I, I don't, uh, no. I, I think that there's just a fake ID that was made because the license bureau said that nobody requested any replacement identification. So they have the info. I think they just put their picture over it um, mm. and have the fake ID. But now that the credit's locked down, it's kind of hard to do anything. Um, you said you got a bizarre one just was it yesterday or day before, like... I would never have shopped there. Oh, I just do that in the show. Oh, I thought that was for I thought that was for real. I said oh. Bed Bath and Beyond. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I know. Because it sounds funny for the act, you know. You know that I spent thirty eight hundred dollars <laughs> buying loofahs in bulk. It's like really loofahs? Okay, I don't even buy dental floss, let alone loofahs. So luckily, and now this is gonna be a shameless plug, I bought LifeLock. Um I bought it the day about uh, with the license, uh -huh. and that has been that is what alerted me to the other accounts being made in my name uh, with Sprint and Best Buy. Now, what are the four? You said there's four. Uh, there's Equifax, Equifax, TransUnion, uh -huh. and I can't remember the other two. But you said that, like one is a minor. I yeah, one is a minor one. Um, that a lot of people don't know about, but it's also it's it's more for like corporations and things, but. Creditors can still run your info through it. Oh. So um, it's really interesting when you lock your credit because you create a PIN with the creditors um, right there. So it's, that's your number. So 
you know, you need that to unfreeze your credit. You need to give them that code. Yeah. So how long will your stuff be frozen? At one point, will you be able to go back and go, okay, I'm all good. I'd like to unfreeze. Yes, whatever like, you want, really. Okay. And, and I also placed a fraud alert, which you can get. It's a 90 days. You know, yeah. But Equifax just had a data breach. Yeah, Equifax had like millions. like Millions. And then I heard yesterday, or was the day before yesterday, that uh, Uber, Uber. Uber had a breach of just like everything. everything. Yeah. So I've I've been using Uber. I'm third. You Me ever? Too. Yeah. So does that mean they got got that information? Do they get our addresses, credit card? I haven't been able to hear much other than Uber had a breach. Yeah. Well, they have it. You know, and then they sell they sell that info. You know, on, online or wherever they want to use it, and they can sell it for as cheap as. I was just watching a special on it. They can sell your identity for five dollars. People will buy it. Just five bucks. You'll get the social security number, mother's maiden name. Credit card numbers, banking account number, everything. Five bucks, you can buy it on the black market. And they can sell that over and over and over to several yes. several people for five bucks and then make a million dollars yeah. off five bucks a pop. Right. And just because nothing has happened in your name does not mean your data is not out there. Yeah, somebody doesn't have it and is waiting to... So that's, Yeah, so I would recommend getting an identity theft program. Now it's you're really going to make me want to go look at LifeLock. But that it's expensive, isn't it? How much was LifeLock? Well, I got, because I was in paranoid mode... I got the... Give me everything! <laughs> yeah, I know, because I didn't know what was happening. I think you can get it for as cheap as $10 a month. Um, but basically, the way it works is that you give them every all your information. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you everything they have, it, which I guess isn't good. I mean, but I'd rather have them, you know, alert me. You give them your banking account information, checking account, credit cards, social security addresses, phone numbers, everything. And they run it through, and any time something happens with any of those numbers, uh -huh. you get an alert sent to your phone. So I've had even banking, even things that I've bought from with my Bank of America debit card, boop, LifeLock sends me an alert and says, did you just purchase this? And you have to go, yes. Yes. Did you just take this money out? Yes. If not, you contact them. And like for Best Buy, when I said that wasn't me, they yeah. called Best Buy, and they took care of the situation. Just like that. So it's been great. So I'm going to keep them around. This is not a sponsored podcast, but that sounds like a damn good company to me. Yeah. It, you know, so far it's been great. They've let me know what's happening. What other, uh, this is going to just sound like a weird, bizarre question, but as much as you're giving good love to, to LifeLock, is there any other company or any other thing that you just think is one of the best things in the world that oh. people should, should? Well, obviously Royal Caribbean International. Well, I wasn't going to go there, but yeah, okay. <laughs> so, yes, absolutely. For all your cruising needs, whether it's fine dining, shopping, or entertainment, you'll find a variety in our fantastic fleet. You can join us on the web at www.royalcaribbean.com. Dang, that was really good. Well, you know. Have you done that before? Have you done voiceover work? No. That was really good. Matter of fact, the, the voice that you do for the, the tram... At Disney World. Oh, okay, yes. Is is that something that you just have practiced, or are you just like... Well, you know, being from Florida, I go to Disney all the time. Uh-huh. So that's that just, you know, you just, please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. So it just kind of sticks with you after a while. Wait, you but, but you can do the whole thing. Yeah. Welcome aboard the Walt Disney World okay. Express monorail, our highway in the sky. We are entering Disney's Contemporary Resort. We're on the Grand Canyon Concourse. You can start today with Chef Biggie's Character Books. For a panoramic view of Walt Disney World, the California Girl, located on the 15th floor, offers an exquisite array with each one prepared on stage to the house. We can now see this mountain range. Big thunder, a special from the turn and space about tomorrow. Now is a great time to fix my meeting to come separate apart. If you even separate stop by City Hall, looking at the major USA. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Magic Kingdom monorail. So if you're dressed in the Epcot, please transfer the trajectory to the there. Take an enjoy day of Walt Disney Magic Kingdom. So there it is. Oh my god. Oh. Look at you giving me the clap. Oh. And that was that. You were like that guy that the speed talker dude. Oh, micro machines, micro machines. Yeah. Whoever. Yeah. Yeah, I've been to Disney a few times. So. Have you ever thought about seriously doing voiceover work? If you can, you know, do stuff like that. Why wouldn't you say, "Hey, I'd be perfect here for your company. I would like to do." You know. Because I have no ambition. Oh. Or you just drive. Want to lay in your room, slay, I just want to slay like dragons and slay dragons and pop dragons. a hemorrhoid. Pop hair. Oh God, the hemorrhoid. I just got my first hemorrhoid, everybody, and this is not a fun experience by any means. And <laughs> sorry, I'm making myself. Verklempt? Yeah. How? 
I don't think I've ever had anybody in the five years I've done a podcast yes. ever discuss hemorrhoids. Well, it just happens, so it's fresh. Literally. So fresh. <laughs> Now what the hell? What now? What do you think caused this? Well, I probably know because I've been eating really healthy. Uh huh. And um, now that I'm signing off, I kind of give myself a little allowance. Uh huh. Eating so much bad food over uh-huh. the past few weeks, they say poor diet will definitely uh, affect and cause a hemorrhoid. So that's probably what did it. And now I've got that little friend down there. <laughs> you know. Have you drawn a face on it, Dirk? I can't. No, I can't even see. You know, please. <laughs> Please. My stomach is as far as I can see in that area. I heard you say last night on stage, I'm sitting backstage, and you go, my mom said I should just pop it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No, yeah, I just... Uh... <laughs> oh, and then you said, my mom, who's senile, said yeah, I should I created, just pop it. I created this character on stage where my mother is this 88-year-old senile woman who lives in Boca Raton. Not true. But I just thought it'd be funny to say my mom said I should pop it. And then the the punchline is, I can't even see my penis. What makes you think I can see there? (laughs) Pop it with a knitting needle. That's what your father did right before he died. (laughs) Why is there blood all over my sofa? Just the thought of popping it. It's Uh, not like it's filled with air. It's not a a tiny little balloon sack hanging out your... Your balloon knot. Who knows what's in that thing? It can. It needs to evap- go away. There's so many names for that too. The the balloon knot, the starfish, the uh, the the brown eye. Really, I've never heard the brown eye. Really? Yeah. Oh, is that who the the song is about? Is that does it make girl? your brown eye blue? Oh, hmm? oh, <laughs> brown eye blue. <laughs> Get him off the slab. <laughs> There's, I don't know, I'm sure there's a lot more of those. And if anybody's listening, please comment down below more... more uh, Terms for the anus? Yeah, yeah. Because I've seen those lists on, on the internet of, like, names for the penis or names for boobs, boobs, jugs, fun, uh, you know, cushions. Uh, you know, there's, like, 200 names. And you're like, who comes up with these? People who do nothing all day and eat Pringles and play video games. That's who comes up. Come up with lists like that? Lists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe me, it's really... We're creating such great lists, okay? We've got a lot of names. We're going over a lot of names for boobies and peepees, and you're going to love it, believe me. Hillary, she never came up with a single name, believe me, I know. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm guessing you didn't vote at all this election. No, because I'm very unaware of um, politics. That's something about me. I don't know anything about it. And so I'm very uninvolved with political stuff. I think that's why your Trump thing works on stage, is because you don't take... There's no side to what you're doing. Like right. Alec Baldwin just makes Trump sound like uh, he's an idiot. Yeah. You just have fun with it. You go, what if Trump was describing Disney movies or whatever that thing is you do? Right, Disney press conference. Yeah, Disney press conference. That's hysterical. Yeah. It doesn't offend anybody. It's just a perfect way to... Yeah, I think it's. I think you have to be because I've seen some people get political on stage, and it causes a dangerous environment in a comedy club. Mm-hmm. You know, but people, funny enough, still think that I have some kind of like you know agenda. People still get angry. I've had people yell at me, really, from the audience, and they're like, Arr! you know, I'm like, relax, it's a joke, calm down. You know, yeah, people get very. It's, it's just a well, weird. I I I felt to do. I I am much more political. Off stage, like you, yeah. I don't do anything on stage, pol- yeah. political wise. But I, I'm a very much a conservative kind of, you know, God bless America. Here's my gun, you know that that kind of. Lee but, Greenwood. Yeah, <laughs> from the hills of Minnesota you know. <laughs> to the shores of Haiti. <laughs> right, but I don't do any of that on stage because I don't want to divide the comedy audience. Of course, and I've seen guys go and walk half an audience because they get they're so like most entertainers and I don't know why want to pretend to be left or are left when that's not really I think the middle it would be the best place to actually live you know but but I've seen them get up there and they're just like you know this guy destroying America I can't believe the idiots that voted him into and then you see half the the idiots stand up and walk out of the room like I voted for him asshole I'm out yeah I see it yeah. yeah, and and so um, 
I have, the only thing I've ever done on the ship that I have felt or heard a oh was when I do the thing about changing channels on the TV. Uh huh. Oh, about CNN. About CNN. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then people got kind of go. Hmm. Mm. 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 I don't care for that joke at all. <laughs> yeah, but that's the that's the closest I've ever come because that's the only thing. For a while, that was all that was on the ship. Yes. And I felt almost like I was being brainwashed because it was all the news I could watch, and I'm like going. That's not even the real story. Because, you know, those of us that seem to try to be educated, like I, I re, I'm a news junkie because I, I went to college for, you know, I wanted to be a, uh, I had an uh, art major and a journalism minor. So I was really into the news. Mm -hmm. So I love reading news and keeping up with it. So when you see just this one part of it, you go, that's not the whole story. No wonder some people are like, I don't think that's right. It's not because you didn't get the whole story. Yeah. And it's just too opinionated anyway. Just tell the story and then move on. Yeah. It's just people arguing. That's yeah. all it is now. Remember when the news at 10 o'clock was 30 minutes and he got every bit of the news? Yeah. Because they would do like, who, what, when, where, how. Who, what, when, where, how. And now here's the next story. A bank was robbed of such and such in the corner in Minneapolis today. Right. Yeah. To, uh, there was a fire in a warehouse. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And, that, and that was it. You didn't have to go, oh. Uh, a, a Hispanic man was caught setting fire to a warehouse. Of course. You know what, you know what I mean? There's a, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. awful. Donald Trump has said whoever started this fire will be deported. Yeah, it's a very, view, the view. It's like the news has all become just the view now. The view. It's just, you know what, whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, these people are out of their minds. You know what matters? Laying in bed. Black lives. Boom. Um, all lives matter. Yes. And now that's a racist statement. <laughs> I am offended, and I'll be writing a letter to the commissioner. Why? <laughs> okay, l let me ask you this. Why do you think either one of those causes people to get upset? When somebody goes, black lives matter, and you go, no, all lives matter. What are you saying, black lives don't matter? No, I'm saying all lives matter. Well, what, does some matter more than the other? What, what causes that friction, do you think? We're not that intelligent. This, here's the thing. You know, we're, we're still in our infancy as a human race. So, you know, we're not Romulans and we're not Vulcans yet. You know, just a hundred years ago, we didn't have, you know, we're a mess still. So, we're a mess. so people need to stop thinking that they know everything and that their opinion is the right opinion. We're still in our infancy as a race on this planet. So people just need to relax. Just go out, have fun, get boozed up, and enjoy life, and stop getting offended and all this. Because you know what? It could all end. You know, the Vulcans could blow this up, and so whatever. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Wow, you, you sound like you ought to run for office. <laughs> we would all live under that credo. Well, it's just like people are so... <sighs> well, here's what I used to think. When I first started going to England to work in the early 90s, it blew my mind... To, to hear every race, every culture speak the perfect Queen's English. Mm -hmm. It was just like, oh my God, I've never seen an, an, an Asian talk like Prince Charles. You know, I've <laughs> never, hilarious. I have never seen a black guy speak like, like Prince, Charles. Prince Charles. And it was just an amazing to me. And I thought, what a beautiful culture yeah. that these people have all come together and decided this is what we are. We're British. Right. And, and, and now, England seems to be under turmoil of people wanting to divide into groups. It's like, didn't you all come together, work it out, and now you want to split up? So is is that a is that a human nature thing? Of you know, of course. You just want to be with who you want to be like, and then why quit trying to force us into into one? Yes, because we were hunters and gatherers. You know, in the grand scope of the universe, it wasn't long before we were all beating each other over with clubs over our heads. You know, and so we're still not that far along yet. You know, Michio Kaku, who is a very famous um, physicist, uh -huh. he says, you know, in the scope of, um, you know, uh, advanced civilizations, he goes, we're not even a category one yet. He goes, they can go all the way up to five. Um, as far as to how advanced the civilization can be, meaning where you need no, you know, you use totally natural energy and, you know, but we're, we're so primitive still in the grand scheme of things. That's why I watch these people on TV argue and I'm like, just get over it. You don't know the secrets of the universe. Relax. And when you're dead and gone, your opinion won't matter. So just play some video games and enjoy your time here, baby. Wow. <laughs> and what a 
perfect spot to end the podcast on. That that bit of of information is what everybody should live with. And I think Simeon should run for president. I think you would make a wonderful president. I would do really great things. I would bring back Blockbuster Video because we all love Blockbuster. It was really a wonderful thing. I'm bringing back Tutti Fruities at Denny's. Those were great. A lot of things, believe me. Mm. <laughs> well, thank you for doing the podcast. Of course. That was amazing. That was one of the quickest one hours, honestly, that this podcast felt like it just zoomed by for me. So oh, this, was, this was so much fun. I can't imagine having a better Thanksgiving in Haiti than, than what you and I have done right here. Yes, so, uh, yes. So this is the way I always close the podcast. This okay. is where I can say, do you have some place that people can find you? Are you a social media guy? Do nope. they follow you? Do you tweet? Do nope. you Facebook? Do you? No. Nope. I am not an L.A. comic at all. I will not. No. <laughs> I always say L.A. comic because I find those are the guys who are always pushing that machine out. Oh, here's this. Here's this. Make sure you subscribe for this. Yeah. I gotta have subscribe. I hate this. I gotta have subscribers. I gotta have subscribers. I gotta have followers. I gotta have a lot of followers. I'm like, you know what? Jesus only had twelve, and that was good enough for. Him. And everybody in the world knows who he is. <laughs> everybody knows. So I'm not following. <laughs> you know, when people <laughs> like this, when they send me messages on Facebook, like, but make sure to like and share. Yeah. You know what? If I liked you, I really would like it. Okay. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. The, I. I, I know um, you had told me a few weeks ago when we had worked together, you had, were actually making fun of, and I won't say a name, of podcasts, like <laughs> like somebody wanting you to do. And I was like, well, then I'm not going to ask you to do, do mine. <laughs> I was making fun of it. You were. I was making and, fun and of it. And then this, I go, hey, you want to do my podcast? You were like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. But here's the here's the deal. Um, one of the things that Hollywood is doing, and I know this for a fact, because one of the one of my friends who is a a uh, uh, more of a famous uh, Hollywood actress has said that when you go audition, now they say how many followers do you have on Twitter or what is your reach on YouTube because they want to know what you're bringing to the project. So if they can get an actress that only you know has eighty thousand compared to somebody who's got four million followers. Who do you think they want to hire? Because automatically, more fans are going to want to go see that project. Yeah, Isn't that I, stupid? I think it's completely flawed. Because we live in a, an era where more people know who 50 Cent than Yo-Yo Ma is. So let's not even question talent. It's like, why doesn't Hollywood do their job and find talent that should be shown to the world? Because that's why we're not having, you know, any more great... We're not having Fred Astaire's pop out of the woodwork. We're having all these idiots who are, you know, okay, so this is what we're going to do. I have hair tips. I'm going to show you how to get amazing hair. Like, it's like... So you have watched those YouTubes. Yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> no, Hollywood, do your job. Get some talent. You know, and stop making musicals with people who can't sing, for the love of God. You love La La Land, is that what you're saying? Oh, no, not really. No, it was okay. It was just okay. I didn't finish it. I couldn't I couldn't make it all the way through. Yeah, but, I did. Yeah. My favorite musical, I'm not a big musical guy, but I loved Paint Your Wagon. I can watch that over and over. You know, I've never seen Paint Your Wagon. You've never seen Paint Your Wagon? No. I think because it, it was a musical, it was a western. and oh, that's the, why. And the music fit. What bugs me about musicals is when they just sing for no reason, or and the whole restaurant knows the song. Oh, you know right. what I mean? Like the whole th next thing, everybody, everybody's dancing on a table. I understand. Yeah, that. at least with Paint Your Wagon, the, the song was in a saloon, or you know, there's somebody out by the the, the wagon singing, you know, singing to the moon. The not ju not just random like. We are the three amigos. <laughs> yeah. That was a that was pretty funny. Too, I love though. the three. <laughs> But you know those musicals that I'm talking about? Um, yeah. That, like some of them where they I've seen where they uh, was uh, it was La, uh, La Mis, La, oh, but, La Mille, yeah. where they sang every word of the "We are going to the fort." Yes, we are. We're going to you know it's that kind of you know what I mean? Yeah, no. That wasn't the real word because no, I don't give it was a shit. Not at all. No, but you know he stole the bread. He stole the bread. He had to feed his family. You know this kind of. 
Yeah, it's light opera. It's basically what it is. Yeah, but you could anybody. But it wasn't even good music to me. It was like you just randomly started going. I need to make the bed. Should make the bed. My pillows need to be fluffed. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no real. Don't sing it to you. It needs to be sung. I can't make the bed until your wife gets out of it. <laughs> Get out of the bed, wife. <laughs> All right, oh, all right. Well, well, thanks for thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Haitian Thanksgiving. Happy Haitian Thanksgiving to you. To to you and you and you.